When Emily read the letter from Mr. Arbor, she couldn't believe what it said. Mr. Arbor explained that the silver seed he gave her had been passed down by his family for many generations. And some say that the seed was so old, it came from the first garden on earth. But do you know what was even more impressive? It's what the seed could do. This seed had come from an ancient wishing tree. There had only ever been one wishing tree in the first garden on earth, and since then there had never been another one like it. Until now. The tree in Emily's yard was the first wishing tree the modern world had ever known. And as you can probably imagine, a tree that will grant any wish you can think of can be used for incredible good or incredible evil. Emily recognized right away how important it was that she protect the wishing tree and use its powers responsibly, not for her own gain, but for those who truly needed help. She knew there were a lot of hurting people in the world who needed the help that only this kind of tree could provide. After she dropped the letter to the ground, she ran outside to check on her tree, but was shocked to see that it had already grown much larger since she had seen it earlier that day. In fact, it was so much bigger that there was a growing crowd of people gathering around her house, whispering to each other and pointing at the tree. Later that night, after the crowd had gone home, Emily's friend Liz came over to play. Liz lived just up the street, and she always felt left out because she was the only kid on their road who didn't have a bike. Emily knew this, so she said, Hey Liz, come here. I want to show you something. So Liz walked to the corner of Emily's yard where the tree was, and Emily said, If you could have a brand new bike that was any color, what would you choose, Liz? And Liz said, Oh, I wish I had a purple bike like yours, Emily. And then the two girls suddenly heard a clatter as something started falling down from the tree. It sounded like a huge branch was falling down, and then all of a sudden, they heard a great big crash. They looked down and saw a beautiful purple bike that had fallen down from the tree. And there was even a tag on it. And the tag said, For Liz. What? Why did you put your bike in the tree with this tag on it, Emily? Are you trying to give me your bike or something? No, my bike is right here, said Emily as she pulled her matching purple bike out of the garage. Both the girls were amazed when they realized that this tree actually granted wishes. Mr. Arbor wasn't kidding, it was true. And Emily said, Hey tree, I wish for no school tomorrow. And just like that... They overheard the music on the radio get interrupted by an announcement. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the school superintendent with a special announcement. There will be no school tomorrow because, well, I just think we all need a break. Enjoy your day, everyone. Emily and Liz gasped. (gasps) It really works. And then Emily's dad called out, Emily, it's time for bed. Oh, hi, Liz. Emily will have to talk with you more tomorrow. Good night. And as Emily lied in bed that night trying to fall asleep, her head was spinning as she tried to think of how to use the power of the tree wisely and how to protect the tree from people who would try to use it for their own evil gain. But by the next morning, it was too late. Some of the mean neighborhood kids who didn't even bother to grow their own seeds had been watching Emily and Liz as the tree granted their wishes earlier that night. And as Emily was fast asleep that night, the mean kids paid the tree a visit and made some selfish wishes of their own. These were some of the meanest, cruelest kids from Emily's neighborhood, and they were taking advantage of her magical wishing tree. One of the jealous kids, Tom, he wished that he could fly so he could escape the village and explore the world on his own. The wishing tree granted his wish, but it only gave him the ability to fly a few inches off the ground and move at a snail's pace. And after floating around for a little while and not getting anywhere, he realized that real adventure comes from sharing experiences with others, not running away from them. Another one of the mean kids was Mike. 
He wished to have the best toys in the village because he wanted to make all the other kids jealous of him. So the wishing tree granted his wish by turning all of his toys into giant living versions of themselves. And while it did seem fun and exciting at first, the enormous living toys were way too much for him to handle and they caused so much mayhem and destruction they broke everything in his house. Mike learned the value of appreciating what he already had. Another one of the kids named Lucy wished to be the smartest kid in the village because she thought it would make her better than everyone else. And the wishing tree granted her wish by making her so smart that she could only speak in big, huge, complicated scientific words that no one else could understand. Huh? It was like she was speaking some other language. And because she was so smart, she couldn't even relate to her friends in the community anymore. And she learned really fast that it was way more important to be able to talk and communicate with your friends and family. Because without your friends and family, being smart doesn't mean hardly anything. And when Emily woke up the next morning and saw all the wishes these kids had stolen from the tree, she was horrified. Why does everyone try to steal from me after I work so hard trying to grow these trees? Emily said, but little did she know, all of those stolen wishes were actually teaching those kids a painful but valuable lesson. That stealing wishes and wishing for foolish, selfish things doesn't serve anyone well in the end. Emily already knew that the best wishes are the kinds that help other people. And so Tom, Mike, and Lucy all came crawling back to Emily's house later that day and apologized. We're so sorry for stealing those wishes from your tree, Emily. Will you make things go back to normal again, please? And so Emily took them all to her tree and said, Tree, please undo these kids' wishes. And just like that, the mean kids went back to normal, except for one thing. The kids didn't go back to their normal mean selves like they were before. Now they were actually really nice and they wanted to be Emily's friend. Not because the tree made them that way, but because they had learned from their bad choices. And so the kids all got together and they decided to use the wishing tree to do something wonderful for their village. The kids put their heads together to come up with a selfless wish that would make the entire village a better place. They decided to use the power of the wishing tree to create a beautiful and huge community park where everyone could gather and play and relax. And the wishing tree granted their wish. And in an instant, an empty piece of land in the heart of the village transformed into a giant, beautiful park. And this wasn't just any old park. It was filled with beautiful flowers and shady trees that were perfect for climbing and rolling hills as far as the eye could see. It also had lakes and rivers filled with fish. And in the middle of it all was the biggest playground you have ever seen. With slides and swings and monkey bars and merry-go-rounds and even giant trampolines that would bounce the kids higher than the tallest trees around. And as the villagers discovered the new park and walked through it for the first time, they were amazed at its beauty. And the park quickly became the favorite gathering place where people could celebrate and have fun and make the best memories of their lives. When Emily and her new friends saw the joy their wish had brought to the village, they were so happy. They had learned the true power of selflessness and the importance of using their gifts to help others. And from that day forward, Emily and her friends continued to use the wishing tree wisely, always thinking of ways to benefit the village and even the other villages nearby, helping those who needed help and bringing happiness to others far and wide. And the once mean and jealous kids from her neighborhood became Emily's good friends. And they were forever grateful for the lessons they had learned from Emily and the magical wishing tree. And one day, when Mr. Arbor returned from his long journey, he appointed Emily as the permanent caretaker of the wishing tree. And anyone who needed the wishing tree's help had to get Emily's permission and approval. And Emily almost always said yes. And Emily lived a long, happy life. And with the help of her tree, 
They helped thousands of people in need, and none of it would have happened if she hadn't worked diligently to grow the first tiny seed she had been given by Mr. Arbor those many, many years ago. But one day, when Emily was an old woman, she had a granddaughter who came over and was playing in the yard when she discovered something in the grass that had fallen down from the silver wishing tree. She picked it up and marveled at what she found. It was a golden seed that was sparkling in the morning sun like glitter. She didn't know what to do with it, so she just put it in her pocket and took it home and put it in the drawer of her nightstand. And many years later, she would find that seed again and plant it in the ground just like her grandmother Emily did. But she would be even more amazed when she found out what this seed would grow into and what kind of powers this one would have. But that's a story for another day. Do you ever find yourself wondering when the next episode is going to come out for the Storyland podcast? I know they don't come out as much as we all want them to, but if you want to be the first to know about when the next story is going to drop, all you got to do is follow us on Instagram or Facebook, or just go to storyland.show, and you'll find links to all the different places online where you can listen and watch, and even leave a comment and make suggestions about other story ideas that you might have. Just go to storyland.show. Or again, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Just search for Storyland, all one word, podcast. Storyland podcast, and you should be able to find us there. Thanks again for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.